Hi, this is Shad Darby with lovetocode.com. Welcome back to my tutorial on Java server faces. In this video, I'll give you an overview of JSF. We'll cover the following topics. First, we'll start off with what is Java server faces? Then we'll discuss the model view controller design pattern. Next, we'll discuss the benefits of JSF as far as why we'd like to use it. Then we'll take a look at some third party JSF UE components. And finally, we'll wrap up with some JSF resources. All right, so we have a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is Java server faces? Well, it's basically a framework for building web applications in Java. So there are a number of ways of building web apps. You could kind of go old school and build apps using just plain servlets and JSPs, or you can make use of a framework. Now, granted, there's a lot of frameworks out there like Struts, Spring MVC, and so on. However, Java Server Faces or JSF is the standard web application framework for the Java Enterprise Edition. So this is key. It's a standard. So it's um, officially blessed by Oracle as far as having a specification for building web applications using Java. Also, a nice benefit here with JSF is that it's a very popular framework. So a lot of Java shops use it for building web applications. Also, it's um, commonly requested by hiring companies or hiring managers that a developer should have experience with JSF. So it's always good to get this information, uh, get this bullet on your resume and also add it to your skill set. Also, a really nice thing about JSF is that it follows some of the industry patterns or standards. So JSF is actually based on the model view controller design pattern. A lot of the big web app frameworks out there today make use of this model view controller design pattern. For example, Spring MVC, um, ASP.NET has an MVC framework. So a lot of frameworks make use of this pattern. So the really nice thing about it is that once you learn JSF and you learn this model view controller design pattern, if you have to move over to another framework like Spring MVC, then you can take these concepts and that'll help you transfer and get up to speed on that new framework. So it's very useful. So here's a nice diagram of the model view controller. So with the model view controller, you basically take some key functionality of the application and you break it up into smaller components. So here we have a web browser that the user will use. They'll hit a link or submit some form data. It'll come into the controller. The purpose of the controller is that it'll figure out which piece of code needs to execute based on the web request. So it may need to route the code to submitting form data or maybe querying a database or maybe sending an email. And so the controllers like the traffic cop, they'll determine what piece of code needs to execute for a given web request. Now this controller may also access the model. So the model basically provides access to any backend data that you may have. So the model may make a call to a backend database uh, like MySQL or Oracle, or it may even make calls out to a web service or whatever. So the model basically handles retrieving or updating data for you from your backend service. And once it has the data from the model, then the controller will pass this data over to the view. So the view is basically a page for rendering HTML. So this may be a page that'll render the results of a um, SQL query, or it could be uh, rendering the results of a database insert. And that view page effectively at the end comes back as HTML and goes back to the web browser. So that's the idea of the model view controller. So again, controller routes the request, model provides access to backend data, and the view renders a view or HTML response. And that's the model view controller in a nutshell. So what are the benefits of using JSF? I mean, why would you want to use it? Well, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's a standard way of building web app UEs in Java. So for building web applications with Java, it's part of the standard Java EE enterprise edition. Also, the Java server faces framework includes a large number of UE components. So basically they provide nice custom tags that allow you to generate tables, uh, HTML list, or any type of any HTML form. So pretty much all of your UE widgets are available uh, with JSF. And also a really nice thing too, and I'll talk about this in a second, is that it's extendable. So you can have third-party teams create UE components that you can add into your application. 
Also, another benefit of JSF is that it helps you to manage your application state for web requests. So when you submit form data across, uh, it may be only for one web request, but you can also envision a scenario where you want to have your application keep track of the form data. So if you're building like a um, shopping cart application, you may want to keep track of items that the user added to their shopping cart. Or say, for example, you're building like an online exam and you want to keep track of the answers that the user gave for each question. Say, for example, your online exam is 10 questions and at the end you'd like to give them a pass fail score. Well, again, you need to manage that application state uh, and you can make use of that using JSF. And then finally, the most common thing that you'll use with JSF is processing form data. So the user will insert some data, submit it. Uh, here, you can use JSF to perform some validation. Uh, they have some built-in validation rules. And also, you can convert the data to different formats uh, based on your requirements. So uh, this is just a very high-level list of uh, JSF benefits, but a lot of good things. Um, and again, it's a very uh, popular framework. And also, like I mentioned a little earlier, uh, you can make use of the core UE components provided by JSF, but then there's also a large group of developers who've created additional UE components. So you can actually take these third-party components that are created by these open source developers and you can include them into your application. So this is a very nice bonus. So you get the basic UE components, plus you can add in other groups. So on the screen here, I've listed three of the most popular uh, third-party UE components. Uh, they have their own separate website. They have their own separate file. You download it and include it into your project, uh, but it's very nice. So here, um, openfaces.org, uh, primefaces.org, and richfaces. And these are all great sites. Uh, they have documentation available, and they also have demos available. All right, so the next slide here is on JSF resources. The official website for JSF is located here on this link. So this is a site that's hosted by Oracle. It contains tutorials, documentation, articles, and so on. So this is always a good place to start when you're doing work with JSF, just so you can see the official documentation, list of methods, so on um, and so forth. Also, a nice thing about JSF, since it's a popular technology, is that there's a lot of information online about it. So you can find a lot of free tutorials online simply just by doing a Google search. You can also go to Amazon and search for books on JSF. And there's plenty of books out here. So here's a little screenshot of me uh, going to the Amazon site and typing in Java Server Faces, and it came up with X number of books. So there's a lot of good books out there. Um, one thing I want to caution you is that uh, make sure you find a recent book that's up to date. So at the time of this video, uh, the current version of JSF is JSF 2.2. So make sure you find a book that's based on 2.2 and in the screenshot here, we, uh, these folks are up to date um, or something close like maybe 2.1 or 2.0. Uh, but you want to stay, stay away from the really old books like JSF 1 because there's been a lot of changes between there. So again, try and stay around, um, stay with books here with JS 2.2 um, or higher. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up the video. So what we did was we got an overview of the Java Server Faces framework. We also discussed the idea of the model view controller design pattern. We looked at some of the benefits of JSF, and also we had a quick demo of the third-party JSF UE components. And finally, we wrapped up with JSF resources as far as Oracle's website and also books available on Amazon.